tip for you. You know, everyone needs a yoga ball. This is magic. Believe in yourself and really that's all you, that's all you need to do. Hello people, today I'm going to share with you seven natural ways to prepare your body for labor. Some people equate running a marathon to giving birth. I don't know, having done both, I can tell you which one's easier for sure. Running a marathon is harder than giving birth. And I'm sure you were maybe expecting me to say the other way around. For me, running a marathon was a lot harder than giving birth simply because it took me a really long time to train and prepare my body. And yes, you do have to train and prepare your body in certain ways for childbirth. Um, but I also, in some respects, think that our bodies are made to do this. We as women, we were born to bear children, to give birth. So in some aspects, yes, our bodies are kind of already prepared to give birth. Um, but these seven tips that I have for you will surely make the process a little bit faster, hopefully smoother, and a little bit easier. Also, I will say the difference between running a marathon and childbirth is the recovery. Childbirth, I will say, a lot harder during the recovery, okay? Right now we're just talking about childbirth, not the recovery, but I will say, yes, childbirth recovery for me is harder than labor. <laughs> for, uh, absolutely. Um, after I ran my marathon, I woke up the next morning, I wasn't even sore. After I had a baby, naturally, I woke up the next morning and felt like I couldn't move. <laughs> that might have had something to do with the fact that I had stitches, I tore, womp womp, uh, which I know there are certain ways to kind of prepare your body down there so you don't tear, but unfortunately I have not mastered any of those techniques. Or I just have really huge babies, which I just had an almost 10 pound baby, 9 pounds, 11 ounces, completely naturally, and I am so thankful for the tips that I'm about to share with you that I did them and I will say my labor and delivery was a lot easier everything went smoothly it was quick a part of me wanted to share these tips with you before I went into labor but then I was like what if I have a super long labor that you know ends in a c-section and sometimes that happens I know a lot of women I meet a lot of women through my business and I work with moms who've just given birth and I hear a lot of birth stories and I know a lot of women do prepare their bodies in a certain way and still end up having really long labors or they end up in a c-section and I can tell you right now that no labor goes perfectly and sometimes you plan a trip to Orlando and you end up in Kansas. That's that's the best way I can explain it. You prepare for one thing and then life just throws you a curveball and you end up somewhere where you weren't expecting and that's childbirth really. Hopefully these seven tips will help prepare you for childbirth and here we go. So the first one is to drink Nora tea. I made a whole video on Nora tea. I'll link it below. I'll try to put it in the iCard if I can figure out how. Basically what Nora tea does is it kind of balances out your hormones. It tones your uterus, gets it ready to contract properly. It's like working out your uterus, you know what I mean? It is high in vitamins A, B, C, and E, and minerals, magnesium, potassium, calcium, blah, blah, blah. It's known to shorten the duration of labor and um, kind of minimize the need for medical interventions. So drink some Nora tea, like, uh, I don't know, once a day, twice a day, three times a day during your third trimester, and you should be good to go. Tip number two is to eat dates. There was a study done that showed that eating six dates a day for the last four weeks of your pregnancy can significantly reduce your need for induction or augmentation, which is basically the goal here. We wanna go into spontaneous labor. We want baby to be ready. And um, it produced a more favorable outcome for the mom. So why not? Just shove some dates down and call it a day. Yes, this study was done in a very remote part of the world, very like, it was a very small study. I think it was only done on 100 women or so. I could be wrong. I'll try to find the study and link that below too. But uh, yeah, if the study came out that these women all had shorter labors and everything went more smoothly, why not just eat a few more dates a day? They are not always delicious, but I do. You can find some recipes out there to make them more delicious. 
Tip number three is working out. And this might be the last thing you want to do when you're pregnant, but I promise you um, I, it will really prepare your body very well to um, get through labor. Like I said before, training for a marathon, you kind of have to prepare your body a little bit to go through l the labor process. There is a lot of um, breathing involved. There's a, a lot involved in labor. And yes, it can be tiring, but if you prepare your body, everything will be okay. Ina May, there's a quote out there that says from her that if you do 300 squats a day, you will give birth quickly. And hey, that's the goal because no one wants to be in labor for days and days, <laughs> right? So I have some notes here. I'm just going to jot off a couple things that I found out about working out and how it's good for the labor process. So it says that working out helps to stretch your lower back, relieves pressure on your pelvic floor. It helps keep your center of gravity, good birthing position. It reduces the risk of tearing. It didn't for me. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. The American Pregnancy Association recommends squatting during labor <laughs> because it opens your pelvic uh, floor, I guess, your pelvic outlet is what the American, the American Pregnancy Association calls it, the pelvic outlet. It opens that by 10%. I don't know, why not do some squats while you're in labor? I did it when I was in labor, and uh, I don't know if it helped or not, but it sure got things going along. I will say, though, uh, you want to avoid squats if you have a breech baby, so I'm just putting that out there. Another great workout to do while you're pregnant is to just simply walk. You don't have to be doing 300 squats a day. You don't have to be lifting weights or like running marathons or anything like that. But if you just simply walk, that can also prepare your body for labor. It's the simple things in life. It can help move baby down and also any type of workout, exercise, whatever, increases the oxytocin in your body. And who doesn't want more oxytocin, right? Because happy people don't kill their husbands. What movie is that from? Okay, tip number four is to take primrose oil. Some people call it evening primrose oil. Um, some people insert this vaginally after they're 38 weeks along. I think 38 weeks is like the magic week. Um, and this just helps to ripen the cervix to kind of get things going and ready for the labor process. I have, I have also read that you can take the evening primrose oil orally and then at 38 weeks you can start inserting it vaginally. Tip number five is to get a yoga ball. Let me tell you guys, this changed my life during labor. When I had my second daughter, oh my gosh, my nurse was like, do you want me to get you a yoga ball? And I was like, sure. And then after being on the yoga ball, I was like, this is magic. I, I could not. Once I got pregnant with number three, I could not imagine going through the labor and delivery process without a yoga ball. I even brought my own to the hospital. Luckily, I didn't need to bring it inside because they had plenty, but I do think it's something that you have to ask for. I know I had to ask for it when I was in labor, so just a tip. Let me let me read you off some things that yoga ball helps with. Okay, and it not only helps during labor and delivery, but it also helps like prepare your pelvis when you're just pregnant. Okay, so I found that it says it opens and creates space in the pelvis. It allows baby to drop down a little bit. It can help speed up dilation, effacement, and the process of labor. And who doesn't want all of those things to happen? It can help relieve back pain. What? Hip pain, pelvic pain. Everyone needs a yoga ball. You can bounce on it, you can rock back and forth, forward, backward, hip circles, figure eights, squats. The ideas are endless on a yoga ball. Get a yoga ball, I promise you. Even if you're not pregnant, this is like, I know some people bring yoga balls to work um, if they're like sitting at a desk a lot because um, sitting on a yoga ball makes you, makes your posture better. Um, it gives you a little bit of a workout. It's better than like sitting in a chair. So just get yourself a yoga ball. You won't regret it. Okay, and tip number six is really important. You need to prepare your mind, not only your body, but your mind for um, the labor and delivery process. Contractions are difficult. They can get really intense. But if you prepare your mind to know that, okay, each contraction is going to bring my baby into this world and it's helping me, you know, get one step closer to meeting my baby. If you can wrap your mind around that, then going through each contraction, it makes it a little bit more easier. You need to make peace with the fact that, yes, 
sometimes they are going to be a little more intense and as things get farther along but um, there are a lot of like relaxation techniques to help you kind of understand that process a little bit more so what's it called oh hypno babies I know there's like hypno baby classes that you can go through there's like hypno baby CDs that you can listen to before you go into labor and also while you're in the labor process as well and it's supposed to just um, you know have your mind be at peace and relaxed and all of that it helps keep you calm it helps prepare you to stay calm during the labor and delivery process Many women stall out during the labor process because their body is just tense and so kind of preparing yourself for figuring out how to relax your muscles and how to relax your body and your mind during the labor and delivery process will kind of move things along a little faster. I know when I was, when I had my first, my body, my labor stalled out at eight and a half centimeters for four hours. It was not fun. I was going all natural and to be at eight and a half centimeters for four hours was not cool. And I know my, I, I, I was not progressing because I have pictures of myself going through contractions at eight and a half centimeters and one, not only what is I in bed, which is like the worst position to be in while you're laboring, but my, my shoulders are like this, my face is tense, and you can just tell that my entire body was tense. I needed to learn to relax my shoulders and breathe naturally and you know all the fun stuff you don't have to get like a hypno baby cd or anything like that just simply doing yoga or meditation or like the imagery i know a lot of people imagine like the baby lowering down and coming out and all of that stuff and uh i will say that's a little bit hard to imagine things like that while you're pushing out an almost 10 pound baby because i've been there Okay, and the last tip, tip number seven, kind of a tip, kind of whatever. Um, I found that eating stevia, like the natural sugar, can increase your amniotic fluid quickly. There's only anecdotal evidence on this, and this can be important if you're like leaking amniotic fluid or um, if you have a breech baby and you're trying to encourage it to turn, um, to try to like bump up your amniotic fluid, you know, eat some stevia. Also, I read that contractions are less intense when you have more amniotic fluid um, because you're not feeling like the pressure of baby. So I know once your water breaks, that's when your contractions become a lot more intense because you don't have like that cushion of, you know, the sack of waters. So yeah, it's always nice to bump up your amniotic, amniotic fluid, make sure you're drinking a ton of water. I know there's probably a lot more tips on how to have a natural, easy delivery, but those are the seven natural ways I had to share with you and I hope this helps you out. I've had natural labor and deliveries. I have three kiddos and my first labor and delivery, I didn't do any of these things and I can tell you my uh, like intense contractions lasted for oh about 12 hours. Uh, not cool. Uh, and with my second labor, I had, I had Pitocin, so obviously my contractions were a little bit more intense, um, but they did not last very long, maybe two hours. I went from like four centimeters to holding my baby in about two and a half hours, so not bad at all. And then my third labor and delivery was probably the shortest of all of them and I did all of these things with my second and third. I will tell you that the labor and delivery process, I don't know if it's because of I, I did all of these things or because I've had kids in the past so my body kind of like knows what it's doing now, but I truly believe in all of these tips and I think they played a huge role in making my labor and delivery smoother, shorter, and just an all-around better experience. And, oh, one tip that I don't have on here that I will share with you, tip number eight, bonus tip for you, get a doula. I promise you, you will not regret it. Yes, some doulas are super expensive, but I, I promise you will not regret having a doula, especially if you're going for an all-natural labor or even if you're not, just having that support system, having someone there just talk you through the labor and delivery process and the, I mean most doulas are trained in childbirth education as well and they know certain techniques on how to keep your body 
um, kind of relaxed and like they know certain pressure points on where to where to touch you to help you like through the hard contractions and I will say I had a doula I absolutely loved her I really enjoyed having her uh, when I was in labor and I've never met a doula that I didn't like. <laughs> They're all super, super sweet, and they kind of just have that earthly, like, ha, ah, like angel beauty about them. So get a doula. That is, that's probably my top tip for you. If you are going for an all-natural labor, get yourself a doula. I promise you, it will be money well spent. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope these tips help you out. If you are going for an all natural birthing experience, good luck to you. Yeah, you can do this. Your body can do this. And I hope these tips help you out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Guess what it is? <laughs> it's a... I'm not a child, is it? <laughs>